Hello everybody, um, my name is Ken White and I just wanted to do a quick video on chirp programming for the Beofeng UV82 V2 Plus. Um, I recently did an unboxing video and I've had several questions about programming so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, obviously the first piece of software you're going to need is chirp. Um, once you have this downloaded and you do have your USB adapter, um, what you're going to want to do is right click on your Windows um, start bar there if you are running Windows 10. We're going to look at our device manager and you're going to want to go to ports. And right here this prolific USB to serial COM port is going to be your programming cable for your Beofeng radio. And if you reference the COM number uh, make note of that and we'll talk about this a little bit later. If I right click on the driver, you can see here I am using driver version 3.8.120. I know that this is not the latest version of this driver. Uh, I, I don't think the latest version works, although now I'm seeing that this looks like this updated. So maybe this maybe this has been updating. but. Um, if you have trouble finding the correct drivers, uh, let me know and I will do my best to provide you with the information to attain these. But if you've got this information, you see this item here and there's no little exclamation point or anything next to it, uh, then you should be all set for programming. So let's close out of this and we'll start fresh. We're going to open up Chirp. Um, you'll be presented with this screen. There might be a tutorial box, I think, that pops up the first time you launch it, but you can close out of that. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do is go to File, New, and this is going to be our template. This is what we're going to fill out in order to tell the radio what frequencies we want at what numbers, etc. So the first thing you want to do I usually start with about a hundred channels. So right here where it says memories, memory range channel, I do one through a hundred. And you can do whatever numbers you prefer. If you're not going to use a hundred frequencies, you don't need a hundred. Uh, it doesn't really matter on the radio side because if a, a frequency is left blank, then it's not going to uh, record. So uh, what you want to do is check this box that says show empty. All right, now we can see our blank slate. Uh, so the first thing that we will do, and this is just personal preference, but what I like to do is channels one through whatever. I usually set those as my two meter repeaters. And then personally, what I like to do is I find 40, channel 40, and I start all my 440 channels there. Um, this helps down the road so that You'll remember, you know, if I want to go to this particular 440 repeater, I know it's going to be channel 40 something. It's just something I do. It helps me out. Uh, and then like simplex, for example, I usually start simplex frequencies on like channel 60. And, you know, even if I haven't used a total of 60 channels up to this point, I just like to separate them by tens to make it easier to navigate on the radio. Um, but essentially what we do, working from left to right, the location number here will tell you what memory channel is going to be programmed in the radio. Uh, the frequency box here is obviously going to be what frequency you're using. So we'll type something in there. Um, if you put a name in here, you could do, you know, if, if it, the repeater had a name, we could do, you know, I'll put my call sign in there and then this way it'll display on the radio the actual name of the repeater and you can put whatever you'd like in here uh, however the amount of characters you type in this space will be limited to uh, your display on your radio um, next you select your tone mode and usually it's going to be a squelch let me see tone squelch receive actually I'm sorry this guy here and you can set your frequency to whatever the PL tone is going to be. You know, let's say 103.5, for example. Um, now the offset here is going to be our, um, <clears throat> obviously our frequency offset. And under the duplex button, we can tell it whether it's a positive offset, a negative offset or no offset at all. You can do off there if it was simplex and then obviously we would set this to zero. 
Um, I actually already have a form filled out, so we're going to go to that since it's done. I think I do. Maybe not. I thought I had an extra one in here. Let me find it. There we go. So this is this is just a, a small list that I've programmed for myself. Again, I personally leave the zero channel blank, so I'm not trying to go to channel zero. But as you can see, I start with like my, I guess this is all two meter stuff. I haven't really, I'm new to the area that I'm living at now, so I, unfortunately I haven't had a lot of time to look at other repeaters. But this is the general layout I use. As you can see, I've got my frequency, uh, repeater names, um, what type of tone mode you're going to be using. And then once we have all this set and you've got everything where you want it, we're going to go to radio and upload to radio. Now if you remember when we were looking at the device manager and we were looking at our port, it said COM3. So this is the COM number that you're going to want to use here. So if you've got multiple choices here, go with whatever device manager is telling you. And although I do have the UV82 uh, V2 Plus, um, that model is not listed on the drop-down menus. So use the UV-82 high power. And I'm going to go ahead and connect my radio right now while we're doing the video. And what I like to do is I put my Beofing radio, you'll probably hear it turn on in the background. I set it to VFO mode and then I just select a simplex frequency. Next I remove the antenna from the radio and I turn the volume on the radio all the way up. So now I'm on a simplex frequency, the antenna has been removed and the volume is all the way up. I'm going to go ahead and connect my headphone port for the transfer cable. And once I have this secure and in place we're going to go ahead and just hit OK. You'll get this um, warning because first of all we're not using the correct model number for this radio and then also because the chirp recognizes that this driver you know it, it's still buggy it's in an alpha stage so uh, just ignore it hit yes and you'll see this cloning box one of two things will happen uh, if you get this message which a lot of people do and this is where you really get frustrated um, don't freak out. Just turn your radio off. Okay, we're gonna unplug it from the computer. So the ra uh, the radio is completely disconnected. I'm gonna do the same thing again. Now we're gonna turn on the radio. We're on a simplex frequency. There's no antenna. I'm just gonna reconnect it again to the computer. And let's try this one more time. And we're just gonna upload to radio. Com three. Yes and now it's going through. Okay, so what happened was the connection on the radio itself is extremely sensitive. Um, this is the case with almost any brand, but especially Beofangs. Uh, the transfer cable that you receive is pretty cheap to begin with. I have received uh, transfer cables that are defective and you know, right out of the box they just didn't work. Now, you'll know if your cable's bad because it's not going to show up in uh, Device Manager. You won't even see anything here. Um, now, if you are trying to troubleshoot and you've reconnected your radio a thousand times, everything's clean, you can't figure out why it's not um, responding, again, make sure your volume is all the way up. And just continuously reset these prongs on the side of the uh, on the side of the radio. Just keep on plugging it, plug it back in. Um, just try and get it to set just right because it is extremely sensitive. Um, but that's what I do to get my UV82 V2 Plus programmed um, under the UV82 High Power model selection in Chirp software. So hopefully this helps you guys. Um, continue to send me questions and like I said I'll try and do my best uh, to help you guys out and before we go I just want to give you one more quick tip if you cannot 
um, for whatever reason, get your radio uh, information sent to the radio. Uh, try to work backwards. So what I mean by that is you've got it connected to the computer. You've got your volume all the way up. The antenna's off. You're ready for your transfer. Uh, but go to radio and try using download from radio because what this will do is it'll attempt to figure out, um, you know, what what template, I guess, the radio is using. So if we've got our COM port selected, our vendors selected, our model number. Again, I have the V2 Plus, which is a UV82, but we're gonna use the HP model because it's not, uh, Chirp hasn't updated to the V2 Plus uh, software yet. So just use the UV82 high power, hit okay, yes, and it should pull the information down from the radio. Um, but again, in order to get this to work, you've just really got to mess around with these plugs. If you've done everything you can and it's still not working, your USB port or your, the actual cord could be defective, um, but it's usually just a matter of getting the prongs lined up perfectly. I can't stress that enough. All right, guys, hopefully that helped at least one person out there. And um, I'm going to do a second look video at the UV82 V2 Plus again because there's not much out there. I know I did the unboxing uh, video, but uh, there's been a few questions to follow up on that. So I'm going to go ahead and try and do another video for you guys here shortly. Hopefully that's uploaded before too long. And if you are interested in radio stuff, you've got questions about builds, um, you know, maybe grounding, whatever around the shack, uh, just let me know and I'll try and do my best to get back to you guys or at, at the very least make a video on uh, my thoughts to the subject. So if you're interested, let me know. And uh, of course, you can always subscribe to the channel. Uh, this is brand new channel, so I'm not really sure where we're going with it yet. But if this is something you guys like, just let me know and we'll keep the content coming. Thank you for now and uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you guys down the page. 73.